Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are back. I had, uh, listen now, we had a little bit of a break, but uh, praise the Lord. I've been preparing <clears throat> some things here this morning, and I know you are going to be delighted in what you see and what you hear today, because everybody in life faces storms. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, there are all different kinds of storms. And so we have to be very sensitive. We have to be very sensitive to what kind of storm we are facing in life. Because once we know what kind of storm we face, we can prepare ourselves and handle that storm accordingly. And so... The most appropriate example that I have is obvious, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you're in for a treat. Good morning. God bless you, Renee. Welcome back from these wonderful travelers and this list. Praise the Lord. Now, I always start off, first of all, with a little scripture, a prayer, and then I'm going to handle, uh, go straight into Three, there's about three specific ways in handling a storm, and we're going to see how Jesus handled the storm of life. Amen. So I'm just opening up here by guidance. Remember my little prayer book? And uh, so we just read a, a little scripture there. The, Lord's, uh, the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul and he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Briefly, I pray then there. I say, Father, I thank you that you make me lie down in green pastures. I will lack never good food from your word. Thank you for green pastures of revelation. Thank you, Lord, that you lead me beside quiet waters. You will tell my soul and give me the authority to quiet my soul, my thoughts when needed. I thank you. Oh, there it is. I thank you that you restore my soul. There it is. He I thank you, Father, that you guide me in paths of righteousness. That means in your paths of right standing, my relationship with you. For your name's sake, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Now, Let's get into the storms. Now, it is very interesting in life, you find that in a natural, when there is a storm, what do you do? You immediately uh, switch on, uh, you turn on your park lights, okay? And if there's rain, what do you do? You turn on your windscreen wipers, as we would say, or your blade, windscreen blades. And uh, the reason why, so you have more clarity of vision. And if there's a lot of rain, then you're going to not drive on parks, but you're going to most probably put your lights on dim. And if there's a lot of mist, fog in the air, or uh, precipitation, however, or even a little bit of snow, you're going to have your lights on bright. So it all depends on the measure of the storm. And like, likewise, with the Word of God, we've, we, you know, they, you've, we've got to get more revelation of the Word so that we do not just drive or a walk in life with our park lights on. The more revelation you get from the Word of God, you can then take your park lights, put it perhaps on dims or on brights. And the more light that you can increase through your obedience in doing what God has told you, in doing what is right, that is right. The more you obey, the more you're causing your 
and your lights to go from park to dim to bright and uh, sometimes people have got more lights on their vehicle spotlights and what have you now let's look at how to handle a storm okay i want to bring up this picture on your screen today here you see a man in a boat and facing a storm by himself you know, we can either decide we can handle the storm by ourselves, and we will have to uh, work harder at the oars or rowing harder. And sometimes we begin to work so much harder at the storm that we actually forget who is really with us in the time or during the time of that storm. And I'm going to share with you, there's a two or three powerful principles what to do in a storm. Now, look at this next picture here that I'm going to bring up. Okay. Let's get right into this. All right. There is the disciples. they in a, a very messy storm. Okay. Let me just make a note here. Yep, I've got that. Okay, they're in a very uh, messy uh, situation. And I'm just going to turn there in Luke 8, 22. And there's powerful principles here. You may have to make some notes. Very, very quick, sharp principles. The Bible says, now it happened, uh, Luke 8, 22. Now it happened that he got into a boat with his disciples. So Jesus is in your boat. This is your boat, your body. Jesus is inside of your boat. He's with you. He's inside of your boat. It happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let's cross over to the other side. What is God saying to you right now? I want you to cross over in your spiritual assignment from point A to point B. What is God saying to you? And whilst you're busy crossing over, hello, some storms are going to come against you. Watch this now. Luke 8, 22. Let's cross over to the other side. They launched out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. How about that? Jesus is asleep in, the, in this boat and uh, uh, he, because he said, we're going to cross over to the other side. Jesus did not doubt his words. Jesus did not doubt one bit that he was going to get to the other side. Jesus just knew that he knew. He trusted the word of his uh, father because the son can only speak or do and say what he sees his father doing in heaven. There's the first key. But as they sailed, he fell asleep and a windstorm. Let me underline that there in my Bible. It's good to underline your Bible. If you don't feel like underlining your Bible, just buy another Bible. Okay. <laughs> and a windstorm came down on the lake and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. Uh oh But Jesus is still sleeping. And they came to him, and they awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Don't you care about us? Interesting. You see, the storm can rage for as long as the storm can intimidate you, but if you, when you realize Jesus is in your boat and you go to Jesus and you awaken his presence, you awaken his presence on the inside of you. That's the key. You've got to awaken the presence of Jesus on the inside of you. He's in your boat. You would expect Jesus knows exactly 
exactly at that moment what you're going through. Of course he does. That's why he goes to sleep. He has his rest. He's in a position of rest. But the disciples were in a position of, God bless you, sis fellas. God bless you. And God bless you, Andre. Hallelujah. We've got precious people watching here today, my Lizzie. Uh, I see there's a guy next to my Lizzie on the photo. I, I wonder who that man is. We must uh, pray. And then Renee, hallelujah. Oh, with that little baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had the privilege of holding him. Yep. So get back. Let's get back here. So Jesus is in the boat. Storm rages. They are obeying Jesus' words. Let's cross over to the other side. Here it comes. Are you ready? When Jesus is in your boat, how awake is the presence of Jesus in the atmosphere or the realm of your mind where the storm actually takes place? They became anxious, the disciples. They were anxious. They were actually accusing Jesus. Don't you care that we drown? And he ignored the accusation. He ignored anxiety and worries during a time of a storm. He turned his face to the storm. There's the key. And he dealt with that storm. And he said, be still. He rebuked the storm. The Bible says he arose, rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. That, that, uh, the wind... And, 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 and the waves that are beating, the waves of our emotions, the waves of our, thank you, Andre, preach with me, y'all. Put out anything that comes to your mind, and when it's good and holy, I will put it on the screen. You see, Jesus dealt with the storm, and then he turned to his disciples, and he says, because they were fearful and uh, because they thought who who is this man he, he he speaks to the storms but jesus said to them where is your faith where is your faith beloved yesterday i was saying uh, where was it luke 18 verse 8 or so it should be uh when the son of man returns will he find faith in the earth. He's not coming back for the biggest um, uh, 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 church, the latest modern church, uh, the latest apostle or prophet. He's not coming back for, you know, the best uh, kind of decorated or latest technology in a church. He's coming back to f uh, see if he will find faith in the earth. Faith, faith, that's what he's coming back for. So Jesus got up and he rebuked the storm. So that's number one. That's our first example. Now we're going to go to our second example. I, th I think there's about three of them. All right. So in this particular example, we have seen that Jesus got up. He dealt with the storm. But the only reason Jesus got up is because his disciples woke him up. We must awaken the presence of God on the inside of us through worship, through praise, uh, through uh, uh, thanking Him, through prayers. Awaken up that presence of God on the inside of Him. We know God never sleeps nor, nor, nor slumbers, but you've got to uh, make sure you will activate His presence. Amen. Amen. Now, Remember, that was our first picture, all right? The man on his own battling. And let me just say this to you. God has never intended for man to be alone. Right in Genesis 1, he says, it's no good for man to be alone. That's not always applicable to marriages. It's also facing troubles and problems in the earth realm. That's why Jesus sent his disciples out two by two. Uh-huh. Now, let's get to the next scene. Are you ready? All right. So now, here we see in Luke 8.22 what we've just 
dealt with. All right, we've just spoken about him. Jesus calms the storm. And when he's in your boat and you've awoken his presence or awakened his presence, he will take care through you. Are you ready for your next scene? So, number two, here it is. There's the disciples, and they are in the midst of a serious storm. They're in a, they're in a serious storm. Let me just see there. It should be around about Matthew 14. I'm just turning there. Um, Matthew, was it 14? 22 or so. Yep. All right. That's what it is. Let me just underline there in my Bible. Jesus walks on the sea. There we go. Let me just highlight that. Okay. Now, here, here's the disciples. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitudes away, he went. Uh, uh, when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the disciples now, they were in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves and the wind. You, you've got to now listen very cautiously what I'm about to say. There comes a time in our lives where it is only uh, let, let, let me rephrase it. There comes a time in our lives where you have an instruction, a prompting, a conviction uh, by the Holy Spirit to go towards the other side of your life from fear to faith, from turmoil to peace, from offenses to love, yes, from anxiety, worries, to total peace. You're crossing over from unbelief to belief. And his disciples are facing a bad storm, as you can see right there on your screen. They're facing a bad storm. But here's the thing. When you go through a storm, you must know when to stay in your boat or when to get out. See, some people will get out of their boat prematurely by facing a storm. Okay, I like what my Lizzie is saying here, from stress to rest. That's a good one, my Lizzie. From stress to rest, hallelujah. There's somebody else preaching here as well. Going to the opposite side in life. Amen. Preach with me. Whatever you folk put down there that can help somebody else. Hallelujah. Now, watch this now. Peter saw this person walking on the water. Pay attention now, quickly. And that was during the fourth watch. That's during the fourth watch. Okay, and Jesus is walking on the storm. You have a Jesus called the Christ, the Lord, who's on the inside of you. When you awaken his presence together, you and him can walk on the storms of life and not the storms of life walking on you. Now watch this now. And when the disciples saw him walking, okay, on the sea, they were a little bit troubled. They thought it was a ghost. And immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I do not be afraid. And that's your word for today. Jesus is saying to you, he's saying to you, be of good cheer. It is I do not be afraid of anything. Because God be with you who can be against you. God be for you who can overcome you. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if that is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus in verse 29, he says to Peter, he says, come. 
you see? Come, and when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. There's a time where you need to get out of your boat. There's a time where you need to hear the words of God. And when he says to you, come, walk. See, there's a time you have to walk on the storms of life and not allow the storms of life to walk on you. There comes a time where maybe you have to stay in your boat. Like when Jesus was in the boat and the storm came. Remember that first picture that I brought up? Where was that? Uh, that was the individual rowing there. Let me see it there. There we go. And uh, remember there the disciples st uh, stayed in the boat, but they awoken the presence of Jesus Christ in their life, in their uh, uh, abode, in their surrounding. See, God doesn't have to pay attention until you pay attention to God. And if God does reach out towards you without you paying attention to him, that is only but by grace. But it's far better if you are in a storm and you activate the presence of God. Now, watch this now, okay? Watch this now. And then we progressed here with, uh, and this is where we are busy with, Peter got out of his boat. And as long as he looked at Jesus, he could walk on the water. As long as you visualize the word of God and you begin to see the word of God on the inside of your mind, your emotions, your thought patterns, your, 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 your very uh, inward eyes, when you can see that scripture at work, that word of God at work, because Jesus was the word. He is the word. And he says, come. And Peter got out of that boat and he himself walked up the storms of life. But here's the deal now. Here's the point. Are you ready? Then he looked at the storms. Look at that. He started to look away. And the moment that he looked away, he started sinking. When you uh, look away from the word of God, you will start going down. And let me just say this to you. You were never made to drown through the storms of life. Because the word of God says, when I go through the storms, when I walk through, when I go through the waters, I will not drown. When I go through fiery trials, I will not burn. There's a, uh, you know, the uh, prophet in the word of God declares what God has told him, said, when you, God bless you, Sharon, God bless you, keep your eyes on Jesus, she says, amen. You see, when you keep your eyes on the word of God, the word of God is solid. The word of God cannot sink, cannot drown. When you walk, Come on and walk on the word of the Lord. Come on and walk on the water with me. For you will not fail. You will not drown. So let's just walk on the water with Jesus. <laughs> I wish I can sing like these wonderful people. Anyway, God knows I make a joyful noise. All I'm saying to you is today, as we're going to close this broadcast, so we're going to close this broadcast, and that is when you handle the storms of life, bring that up. When you handle the storms of life, you're either going to stay in your boat, or first of all, you're going to have to face it by yourself if you're not having any help, or a person to agree with you in prayer, you, you might be very much in a mess. When you're in the storm, all right, let's look at the next picture. And, and remember, Jesus is in your boat. You've got to awaken his presence. Whether it's through worship, praise. Remember when they put Paul Silas in jail during a midnight crisis? 
they started to praise their God and sang or sung songs unto the Lord and the presence of God found it and shook that present that's trying to bind them and, and lock them away from the things of their God and God caused the prison doors to uh, swing open and the chains of injustices came off them. Why? Because they activated the presence of God in a time of desperation. In a time when you face a storm, it's so easy trying to look for the latest formula, the latest idea, the latest brainstorming, the latest, the latest, the latest. How about just worshiping God and he will give you the clarity of what to do next. And when they woke in his presence, oh, hallelujah, he got up and rebuked the storm. Likewise with you, you have the word of the Lord on the inside of you. The word of God in your mouth is just as powerful as in his mouth. You've got to believe it, have faith in God, trust God, and begin. Faith has a voice. Speak to your circumstances. And then we see there comes a time you have to get out of your boat and walk on the water. Walk on the storms of life. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this broadcast. And tomorrow we'll carry on. And remember, God be for you who can be against you. Amen. Look in that mirror today which is the word of God, bam, or in that natural mirror and say, hey, you are more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. Those things on the outward wastes away on the inward of my life. I'm being renewed day by day. My faith is growing. Hallelujah. Start confessing the things of God over your life. And you'll see, you will not even be moved by the issues that's happening in the earth around. God bless you. Until next time, Jesus is Lord. Bye now.